It was the summer of 1940, and World War II was raging across Europe. Germany had launched a brutal campaign of invasion, sweeping across neighboring countries and capturing hundreds of thousands of Allied soldiers and sailors at Dunkirk. Winston Churchill knew that Britain was next. On the brink of invasion, the Bank of England began preparing for the worst, stockpiling gold reserves and setting up an underground bank in Ottawa. And in the midst of all this chaos, a plan was hatched, a daring mission to move England's entire gold reserve overseas to Canada. This operation was no ordinary mission. It was labeled top secret and was the culmination of almost a year of planning and preparatory work. The stakes were incredibly high, as the loss of any shipment could spell Britain's defeat. But Churchill was determined. He knew that England's gold reserves would allow him to buy much needed supplies from Canada and the United States and fund the coming war. In total, the order included almost 2,000 tons of both bullion and coins, including substantial holdings from the soon-to-be-captured Bank of France. But moving this much wealth overseas was no easy feat. The convoys would also be carrying significant numbers of what were once privately held securities, which were confiscated by Churchill's government from the British public, who were forced to register their holdings at the beginning of the year. The securities, like the gold, were packaged up, shipped to Greenock, Scotland, and ready for their transatlantic voyage, estimated to be worth around $300 billion in today's value. On June 24, 1940, Churchill gave the green light, and the first of Churchill's convoys began to sail. But it was far from smooth sailing. The Battle of the Atlantic was well underway, and the German submarine threat had reached its peak. In the month of May alone, over 134 ships were sunk, more than 41% of all transatlantic traffic, while only one enemy U-boat was lost. The convoys were easy targets for German U-boats, and the stakes were incredibly high. Miraculously, the first of the gold shipments aboard HMS Emerald somehow made the 4,600 km crossing unscathed, arriving in Halifax Harbor sometime around 7 am on July 1st. But the arrival of the boxes of fish was just the beginning, they were checked and rechecked by officials from the Bank of Canada and Canadian National Express before being loaded into a dozen train cars. Escorted by nearly 300 armed guards, they headed for Sun Life Building in Montreal. The success of Operation Fish allowed Britain to continue its war efforts in manufacturing of war machines. But it was a close call, and the mission was fraught with danger at every turn. As the war raged on, the significance of Operation Fish only became clear, it was a turning point in the battle for Europe's future. 